All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Conqueror and Commander. This is volume 98, featuring a commander deck based around Krond the Dawnclad. Uh, if you want to check out the full deck list, go to puremtgo.com and find my article. It'll be all laid out there for you uh, in an easy-to-read format. So uh, I chose Krond mainly because I hadn't really seen him played since Plane Chase initially came out last summer. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I've only run into him as an opposing commander once uh, before I made this deck. And Krond is an Archon who's flying and vigilant and has a big body. He's a 6-6. Six, six. And if he's uh, enchanted, you get to exile a permanent. So he's sort of a variation of Ural, but not nearly as oppressive, mainly because he doesn't come with built-in hexproof. Uh, and in addition, he doesn't get bonuses for all of the auras you put on him, so there's no real need to go overboard with that. However, the big thing that sticks out with Krond is his casting cost. He doesn't have any colorless mana, and it's three green and three white. The good thing about that is that there is green in there, which means that there's going to be a decent amount of color fixing. So in my initial version of the deck, I basically had enchantments, um, mana ramp, and basically enchantment related creatures and it was sort of a uh, glass cannon deck i could often get crawled out on like turn four and start attacking and just beat down like crazy the problem is is that if i ran into dedicated gra graveyard decks or decks that cons consistently blew up the board i didn't really have any way to recover <clears throat> so this deck doesn't really tend to rush Krond out as much as possible, uh, like my initial version, but it's a little more resilient. It has a little bit of graveyard hate uh, and some other stuff that you can kind of work around with. So uh, obviously the initial thing we want to look at is our um, mana help suite. Uh, none of this is really uh, extraordinary. Uh, Mirari's Wake is obviously an enchantment based uh, uh, Solemn Simulacrum. I do have Rampant Growth and Three Visits. Uh, Cultivate, Kadama's Reach, Verduran, Enchantress. Oh, he, she doesn't belong there. She goes over here. She's a uh, draw card. Uh, Yavamai Elder, um, Cross and Verge, Explosive Vegetation. I liked the Tusker just because late game, if I didn't really need the mana, I could just use him as an extra body. Um, and then after that, we had the card draw. Uh, I basically got the full Enchantress suite with Mesa Enchantress, Core Spirit Dancer, um, uh, Argothian Enchantress, Verduran Enchantress, Sylvan Library. Hunter's Insight is good because oftentimes it's at least six cards for three mana, uh, unless somebody does something to him when you uh, when you're attacking. Femora for Enchantress works well in combination with something like Rancor and um, Aura Talk. Snake Ombra, Drum Hunter, because again, most of the time you're going to have Krond out there. Fugitive Druid is a, kind of a goofy card, um, but I, I ended up using him a decent amount uh, and just targeting him with stuff. There were actually a lot of like goofy cards that I wanted to play with that I just couldn't fit in the deck, um, like uh, Elderwood Scion. Um, five mana card that seems cool because it's got Trample and Lifelink, but you know, it, sh it just... I couldn't find room for it, and it didn't seem like it was overly powerful. Another one that I wanted to work with was Celestial Ancient, uh, and that's a card that actually uh, pumps your team for every time you cast an enchantment. However, your, the creature count's pretty, pretty low, so uh, she was sort of unnecessary as well. There was a lot of, like, there, I think there was one or two other goofy cards that I wanted to put in here that I just couldn't find room to put in. Um, Greater Good is a nice sacrifice outlet to avoid uh, having Kron get tucked. Same with Momentous Fall. Alright, now Kron's not always going to be out there to blow stuff up, so uh, I got a few different cards in here. Scavenging Ooze is some of the graveyard hate. Beast with, Within is all-purpose. The Pride Mage pumps Kron and turns him into a three-hit killer, which is nice. Reign of Thorns is just versatile. Uh, Winds of Wrath is nice because most of the time Krond is going to be enchanted so you can wipe the board. Uh, Wrath of God, Return to Dust. I did play around with Divine Reckoning for a little bit 
that's the um, sorcery with flashback that destroys all but one creature for each person. Uh, and the idea was to keep Krond out there and, you know, have everybody else stuck with some little mana dork or something like that. The problem was, was that most of the time, the creature that people kept was like Consecrated Sphinx or, um, you know, some Titan or something like that. And so it didn't really do much good, so I got rid of Divine we Reckoning. I don't recommend it. Uh, I've got a couple different um, tutors here. The Heart Beast and Three Dreams are uh, Aura um, Searchers. Academy Rector usually grabs Mirari's Wake. Uh, the Tutors, uh, Enlightened and Idyllic, grab whatever you need. Primal Command and uh, Ella Damry's Call are both in here to get Krond just in case he gets tucked. I think he did get tucked once, um, and I was able to bring him back pretty quickly because I had uh, the call in my hand. So both of those are helpful. And then Sterling Grove, of course, gives everybody all your uh, enchantments hexproof and also acts as a tutor as well. Um, on top of that, we also have a decent amount of recursion. Sun Titan, I, I wanted to pick a decent amount of auras that cost three or under so that I could bring them back with Sun Titan. Uh, Replenish. Uh, and retether obviously retether is better in this deck um, but replenished most of the time works out well unless you're facing uh, another enchantment or artifact based deck uh, the myth maker of course you can get stuff out of the graveyard dousing shaman and eternal witness or just you know eternal witness is obviously the best out of all of them but uh, the myth maker works out better dousing shaman for some reason i just didn't use that often i'm not sure if it's because i didn't draw him or what I got three creatures here that are pretty um, aura specific. Uh, aura Tog, Umbra Mystic, Rambid Wombat, and I guess Core Spirit Dancer would work in there as well. I like the Wombat because he was just goofy, and um, I actually won a few games with him, so I liked him. Um, the Aura Tog worked really well with Rancor uh, because you can make the Aura Tog really big uh, with enough green mana. And then, of course, if you have like an enchantress or something like that. Um, you could draw court a ton of cards. Um, we've got our remaining auras right here. Armadillo Coke, Spirit Loop, Fellow Umbra. All these guys are pretty good. I mean, Battle Mastery tends to end, end games quickly. Celestial Mandel uh, is probably the highest priced mana cost. Uh, it's one of the highest mana cost uh, cards in the deck and you know what um, the life gain ability ended up working out really well and uh, it works really well with like Sylvan Library it enables you to draw more cards if you need uh, these guys are basically life gain and battle um, um, you know important auras and then we've got these this is all the protection that we got for Krond asceticism and swift food Boots give um, Hexproof to Krond, and uh, both of them ended up working out really well in the deck. Um, I heard a lot of complaints when I got either of these out there. Uh, Flicker Form, uh, again, is a nice way to like phase him in and out and keep his auras on top of him. Flickering Ward uh, was a little tough to use, mainly because oftentimes I'd want to pick white, but that ended up turning off a decent amount of my Umbras. So oftentimes my fallback was either... Uh, black or blue depending on who I was playing against and then of course shield of the oversoul was um, makes Krond indestructible uh, we've got a few you know fun things here Sarah Sanctum Reliquary Tower High Markets another sacrifice outlet just in case uh, I did play with a couple of off-color um, fetch lands uh, like marsh flats I just don't like using off-color fetch lands, and so I wanted to. I only used two of them, and I did it just so that I could make sure that I had the right colors to cast Krond. I guess if you wanted to be a little more competitive, you might as well put it in the full suite. And then Cavern of Souls always works to make sure that he doesn't get hindered. Krond doesn't get hindered. Um, as you can see, the creature count isn't the highest. It's only 22 creatures. Uh, and so it's mainly a Krond based deck, but there are backup creatures like the Wombat and the, 
the cor the spirit dancer uh, in case Krond gets removed. Um, one other card that I wanted in the deck, but I just I found that I wasn't running into sacrifice effects enough was Sigarda, um, Host of Herons. Uh, I just wasn't really running into Grave Pact a whole ton. Uh, and she's the main reason you'd want to include her. So if you find you're running into a bunch of black decks with sacrifice effects, Sigarda probably could go in for one of these cards. Plus, you know, you can stack her up with a bunch of enchantments too, and uh, she could be helpful as well. Um, now with the deck, what I try to do is, you know, use the early ramp, and typically I don't need to play Krond before it's turn 6 usually, but you can if you want. Uh, you can go all aggro if you think you have enough um, card draw to back it up, and especially if you have Asceticism or Swift Foot Boots. Um, both of these cards are pretty tough to deal with, or at least they make Krond pretty tough to deal with. Uh, the card, the deck can draw, can draw a ton of cards. There were several games where I was in fact uh, a little worried about decking myself, but it didn't end up happening, um, luckily. So if, if you're really like decking yourself a ton, I guess you could use like Guy's Blessing or something like that, or even an Eldrazi. Um, let's pull up the stats here real quick. So the average mana cost is 3.24, which is pretty good. You can see the curve. I mean, I've got one seven mana spell, and then everything's in the twos and the threes. Uh, mainly with some fours and you know it's pretty much it's a little bit of a green deck but not overly so uh, only 17 enchantments in the deck and out of those 17 enchantments I think like 10 of them are auras or something like that there's not a ton of auras in the deck uh, you'll notice that Krond doesn't even need really auras to be threatening he's still a 6-6 flying um, vigilant guy so he's still going to get hate even if um, even if he doesn't have an enchantment on him. Uh, but one of the other things I noticed is that once you exile like one or two things, people tend to concede. Uh, they don't like having stuff exiled. Um, you know, Krond isn't that popular, so people see him and they're like, oh, that's kind of neat, I wonder what will happen. And then the, all of a sudden things start going away and they don't like him very much. So uh, be prepared for that. Um, I think that's mainly it, you know. The the deck's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot of shenanigans in here. Um, the uh, I've got the deck list up here. And you can see that, like, for an enchantment-based deck, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, there, there's not that many enchantments. And out of all of them, the auras are you know, make up only like two-thirds of them. Um, but, you know, so there will be occasional times when you've got an enchantress and you don't have an enchantment right away, um, but they always end up coming, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. So that's the deck. Um, I've got a couple game replays that I'm going to be showing you guys. Go ahead and check them out. Hopefully uh, you'll enjoy them, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks.